Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of In My Plant Based Kitchen. I am Emma Lavez Laroc. I'm a registered holistic nutritionist and a certified plant based chef. And we are back after a month off in Malta. Um, I shared a few videos with you from the road about what we were eating and how we were finding the food. And I'm thrilled to be back in my kitchen um, today for, for episode 18. And since we've been back just a few days, um, I realized quickly upon my return that we are out of sauerkraut. So I thought it would be a great day to a great week to share um, that recipe and that process with you because sauerkraut is something that I always have on hand. I don't have any right now because we've been away. So um, today we're going to make some. This sauerkraut is super simple. I like to just have a small amount um, on hand. I, we don't, it's just myself and my husband. We don't go through huge amounts. Um, so I don't make a bathtub full or a big vat full. I, I make a liter at a time and um, it's just a few ingredients, just a few very simple um, sort of innov innovative, the wrong word, but sort of, um, using equipment that I have around the house. Um, I haven't bought anything specifically for this, so hopefully you can um, do the same. So the ingredients, very, very simple. One red cabbage, which I have already chopped up to save you watching me do that. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Some ginger, um, some Himalayan sea salt, and some dulse flakes. Four ingredients, super simple. So let's talk a little bit about what um, what those ingredients uh, bring to the bring to the table, so to speak. Um, so actually, before I go get into that, though, I did want to mention that you can, of course, buy sauerkraut. So I wanted to talk about why why would you make it yourself at home? One, it's easy. It's really delicious. I much prefer the taste of homemade sauerkraut. It's much crunchier usually. It's also healthier for you because it is unpasteurized uh, for the pasteurization process that takes place um, in, you know, most grocery store bought sauerkrauts kills off a lot of the bacteria and a lot of the healthy beneficial nutrition that um, a homemade sauerkraut would ha have. So it's, it's tastier, it's more delicious, it's easy to make, it's healthier. Why not do it yourself? So, um, okay, so the, the red cabbage, let's let's talk about that first. Um, you can see I've chopped it up um, and I will get into, um, actually, you know what? Why don't I go, I'll get this started because we need to start, let this sit for a couple of minutes to draw the salt out. So let's put it all together, um, start the process and then I'll talk about those, the benefits. Um, or the ingredients. So the red cabbage is already chopped up. You can see it's, um, I just chopped it. A sharp knife comes in really handy here. You can grate it, but I find with a grater or a food processor, but I find grating it makes it a little bit finer than I like it because when you have it a little bit thicker, you can see it's not, it's, it's, um, it's finely chopped, but not super fine. When it's super fine, it gets a little bit softer. And I like it to be kind of crunchy, a little bit crunchy. So I like chopping it up with my knife. So I've chopped that up. Um, and then the next thing you want to add is, um, is the ginger. You'll see I've also kept a couple of leaves aside. So I peel those off right at the beginning because we're going to use those to um, seal the top of the jar at the end, which I will show you. The ginger, I just, I don't worry too much about the peel. This is organic ginger, but I just take a, a spoon and just peel off a little bit of, of the, you know, sort of the harder parts of the, of the peel. Um, so I don't have big chunks of skin that doesn't really soften up. Um, so any knobbly bits, cut them off or, or just take them off with the, with your, um, with your spoon. It's a really good way not to waste a lot. If you try to cut the skin off of ginger, you end up losing a lot of it. So here we're just taking the, oh, my cat is joining us. Hello, Motley. Um, so we're just taking the, the very edges of that off. Add in my compost. And then I'm going to take my grater and I am going to grate it. 
And I like doing this. You can chop it finely if you like, but I find this is a, a, a way to make it soft. Um, it's soft enough. Make sure you don't get your fingers in there. That's what I'm trying to do. Whereas if you if you chop it, unless you chop it quite finely, you might get chunks and then might be unpleasant for people who don't love ginger as much. So just take out any bits that didn't get grated up. I'll put that in. So it's a couple of tablespoons, I would say. And sometimes I put in more. Really, this part you can do to taste. Um, my I had about three quarters of a sort of medium large cabbage. So I've got, or actually it was probably medium cabbage. I've got about a pound and a half there. And that's important when it comes to the salt. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. So I could add another bit of ginger, but I think I've got enough there. I'm going to go with that. And the salt I'm going to add right now. I'll tell, I'll talk more about the amount after, but I'm going to add about a tablespoon and a half. And then I'm going to add half a tablespoon of dulse flakes. And I am going to let, to just mix that up, just gently with my hands so that the salt starts to move through the cabbage. And the reason I want to let this sit, you can get started right away if you're in a huge rush, but the salt is, of course, going to draw the juices of the vegetables out, the cabbage out. And it makes it easier to move to the next process once it starts releasing some of its juices. So you just mix it, mix the salt in, let it sit there. Okay, I got a little ahead of myself. <laughs> Um, I paused the recording to go and feed my cat and um, then came back on and forgot to start recording again. So, um, or I thought I pressed the record button, but it didn't work. So um, what I have done is I waited um, for the cabbage to start to get shiny and um, get some look like it has some beads of water on it, which hopefully maybe you can see a little bit here, but um, it's start starting to release its juices. And then I started packing it into this jar, which is an old um, Adam's peanut butter jar. Basically any kind of one liter jar of, of some kind will work. I've got a, um, a um, old canning funnel, which I use to just put the cabbage in. And then I use my Vitamix juicer when, or my Vitamix um, handle plunger when um, there's more, um, when the cabbage is more towards the bottom. And then once I start, it starts to get full, I use my juicer plunger. And um, what you want to see is you just really want to pack this tightly because what you really want is to get all the air out. You don't want any air bubbles. This is an anaerobic process. If you have any air in that there, there's going to be bacteria growing that you don't want that are not friendly. So you just want to make sure you pack it down really tightly. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is starting to be some juice coming up. And that's what you want is that the juice will come to um come to the top of um the whole jar and start to um, start to, you know, so basically cover all the cabbage so that you can, you can be sure that there's no air inside. So I just want to talk a little bit about all the different ingredients and why we've included them. The red cabbage, of course, is a cruciferous vegetable. It is part of the brassica family along with, um, you know, green cabbage, kale, broccoli, uh, collards, cauliflower, um, Brussels sprouts, all those foods are super, super beneficial for us. They are fiber rich, they're antioxidant rich, especially a colorful one like red cabbage. Red cabbage has 10 times the antioxidants that green cabbage does, so it's a great choice if you like it. And um, when you, um, when, uh, actually I'm going to talk about that in a second. Um, 
first, just in terms of the fiber that it offers, the fiber offer of the red cabbage or antioxidant or cruciferous vegetables um, acts as a prebiotic. So it feeds the microbes in our bodies that are very helpful for us. And when we eat it, um, when we eat fiber, our bodies don't really use it. It goes to our gut, our helpful microbes eat it, and they produce something called short chain fatty acids, which then get, go, um, you know, basically circulates throughout our bodies, um, reducing inflammation and doing all kinds of wonderful things for us, helping us to think clearly and, and maintain a healthy weight and all these, these great things. So that's why one of the reasons why prebiotics are so important. As we're fermenting this, it is also a probiotic, which means it contains actual microbes that are helpful for us to eat as well. Um, and fermented foods, when you ferment a food, it helps to make the food more digestible. Red cabbage is full of vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, and um, the fermenting process makes it easier for us to access and our, for our bodies to use those nutri nutrients. So really good reason to include fermented foods in our, in our diet. Um, the, um, what's the other thing about, um, red cabbage is, and like all cruciferous vegetables, a really important source of antioxidants, vitamin C, it's high in vitamin K. Um, so because of the antioxidants, the vitamin C in particular, it's very, helpful for our immune system. It, there, hopefully I haven't already said this. <laughs> I've lost track of what I said when I was recording and what I haven't, but basically um, these foods are help to fight cancer and they're, they're very helpful for our um, proper immune function. So, so really, really great things to include. Um, like I said, the fermentation process is, is really a good thing for us to, uh, uh, it's good for us to be including a little bit of fermented foods every day. Um, we don't need too much. I'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about salt. Um, the next thing that we included was the ginger. So actually, I don't know if you saw this or not, but I graded it up. Yes, you did. Okay. So that's okay. Ginger is a potent anti-inflammatory. It's also really antioxidant rich. So it helps to reduce the oxidative stress in our bodies. And um, then the third ingredient was the Himalayan salt. Um, I like using Himalayan salt just because it has a it has a few more minerals, It um, or it has more minerals. I mean, you don't want to be eating so much salt that that's where you're getting all your minerals from, but it does include a few minerals. And um, it also is um, very, um, it doesn't include other additives, which I think is even more important, um, which, you know, some table salts and things like that contain anti-clumping agents and things like that. So you want to make sure that you're getting a good quality salt when you do use it. The fourth ingredient was the dulse flakes. And this is a sea vegetable, a seaweed, basically, that is really, really rich in a lot of minerals, including iodine. And so um, that's a great thing to include because we don't, iodine is, is really important for thyroid function and many things in our bodies. And it's not always easy. It's actually quite um, scarce in the Western diet these days because our soils tend to be iodine depleted, which is one of the places that we used to get it from. So um, in terms of the salt, I wanted to talk a little bit about, about this um, because uh, we know that too much sodium in our diet is not a good thing. Um, many of us are on reduced salt diets. I would argue that it's important for anybody, whether you've been diagnosed with high blood pressure or some other um, condition, to uh, be mindful of the salt that you're in, taking in because so many processed foods um, so much, many of the foods that we eat on a, you know, in, in the Western diet are very high in sodium. And it's one of the biggest problems. It's one of the biggest causes of death, um, you know, lifestyle related diseases. Um, it's, it's actually, I mean, hypertension is a huge problem, but it's actually also the, one of the big problems in stomach cancer. So interesting anyway, too much salt, not a good thing. Um, so why do we use salt here? It is actually important. Um, we use a, table, a tablespoon and a half of salt because we've got a tablespoon or a, a pound and a half of cabbage. Um, and that's roughly the ratio you want, a tablespoon of salt to a tablespoon or 
tablespoon of salt to a pound of the cabbage. So whatever your cabbage weighs, you can adjust the salt um, accordingly. So you don't want to use too little salt in this because it affects the texture. You'll get mushy cab, you know, get mushy sauerkraut, which is not a nice thing. Um, it affects the flavor. It won't. Um, using too little salt does it does affect the flavor. Um, it won't be as nice. But it also affects the safety uh, of the prod end product because the salt acts it has a function here. It draws out the um, liquids in the in the in the sauerkraut and creates the proper environment for the health healthy bacteria the healthy bacteria to grow and the the um, the healthy probiotics to grow and the the um, it creates the proper environment for the fermentation process to take place. And if you don't use enough, you'll end up with spoiled cabbage rather than, um, you know, healthy sauerkraut. And if you eat that, there can be problems. So do make sure you use enough salt. But having said that, of course, this is not something you want to sit down and eat a cup of at every meal. It's a, it's a condiment. It should be used um, mindfully. So um, I already talked about the dulse flakes. So we are at the pro point right now that we have basically enough cabbage in here that I'm ready to um, the, do the next thing, which is um, put the leaf. Actually, I want to put a little bit more in. I'm going to have a little bit of cabbage. I've got a cabbage left over, so I probably have a, enough to make another sort of maybe 500 mil jar. Um, if you do have leftovers, um, it's a good idea to try and use a jar that's um, size appropriate because it's harder if you have half a jar, it's harder to make sure that it's airtight. So I, I don't know if you can see this, but there is some liquid coming to the top here. I'll share some pictures I always do um, along with the post on my blog, which I'll link to in the in the um, show notes of this episode, and I'll share the recipe as well. And then you want to take your leaf. Um, it's better if it is a leaf that doesn't have any rips in it and that it fits properly because you really don't want any space between the liquid that's coming up through the top. Well, having said that, look at that. My leaf is a little bit smaller than I would like it to be, but it's still gonna work. You, so you'd want to try to make sure there's no space. You want the liquid to come up above the um, sauerkraut. And then um, I put a weighted jar. So I have a jar that's full of stones. It's a clean jar, which I also will talk about shortly. And um, I put that right on the top and it just pressing it down a tiny bit. You can see the, the liquid coming to the top. So if you're not seeing a lot of liquid, you can just over the next 24 hours, just kind of press it down once in a while, make sure you're getting enough liquid to the top. Um, I will then take a clean um, towel or cloth and put it over this and I'm gonna seal it with a rubber band and put it onto a plate because what you'll find, use a towel that you don't care if it gets stained because the purple juice does stain. Um, what will happen is that more juice will, will rise. And if you have, depending on how much room you have at the top of your, your jar, it may overflow a bit and go. So you want to put it into a bowl on, um, your whole jar into a bowl or onto a, a plate where that liquid can overflow. You let this sit on the counter room temperature for five to six days, taste it, see how it tastes. Um, if you get... Uh, you do want to make sure that everything you're using here is clean, of course, and that your hands are clean when you're doing this, um, because, you know, it, obviously just to, to make sure that the, there is no um, bacteria or uh, that is going to contaminate the process. So the, 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 the this jar should be clean. This jar should, of course, be clean. You can put it through your dishwasher on a, you know, high high temperature setting, and that will be good. And then the the tools that you're using are clean as well as include, of course, the knife has to be super clean when you're cutting your um, your um, cabbage and so on. And then, um, like I said, you set it in the on the counter for five days or so, taste it, 
If it doesn't have enough time for you, just leave it out a couple more days. Um, it really depends on the temperature in your house. So if it's colder, if the fermentation process is going to slow down. If it's warmer, it might. Um, so sometimes in the summer, I'll do it in four days. Um, and then you can, once it's ready, take the cabbage leaf off. Just skim off anything. You might get some like purple bubbles or things like that. Um, hopefully you don't get any mold. If you do get mold, you can make sure you take off a couple of, of inches. Um, the stuff that's lower, to, you know, further down in the jar will be okay, but you do want to make sure you don't, you're not in touch with any of, of that. And then um, you put it in the fridge, put a lid on it, and away you go. That is it. Um, I will show you the finished product next week because I'm going to, um, I'm going to do a tofu scramble next week, which is one of our go-to meals every week. And uh, I love making it it's super easy. It's a great leftover meal. It's uh, anyway, and we always have sauerkraut with it. So I'll show you the finished product next week. And um, in the meantime, I'll share some pictures of the, of the process. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me today in my plant-based kitchen. Happy to be back. Uh, if you have a question or something that you would like me to cover in terms of um, something you'd like to learn about in the kitchen or something nutrition wise, uh, I will be happy to include it in a future um, episode. So uh, you, there is a form that you can fill out in the show notes below. You can also subscribe to my newsletter, which is where I, I send it out on a weekly basis when the episodes are released. So you can keep in, in touch with what's going on or subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much. Hope to see you next week. Have a great week.